Hello and welcome, my name is Lexi and here I like to talk about luxury beauty. Today we are talking about two of Chanel's newest products to the US. We have the Le Beige Water Fresh Blushes and the Water Fresh Complexion Touch. This is a new product, it is not replacing the Water Fresh Tint. Both of these are sticking around in the permanent range and we're gonna talk about how these are similar, how they are different, and I also have several demos to show you how they compare on the face as well as different application methods for these. So let's go ahead and get started. First, let's take a look at the Le Beige Water Fresh Complexion Touch. So you can see that when you are looking at this compared to this container, take a look at the size of the droplets. You can see that these are gonna be much finer. These are much larger pigments in here can also see obviously the packaging is different you have kind of this like outer wall plastic on here whereas this is going to be a little bit more of a slim design it's still a plastic tube as well and this one here the complexion touch comes in 16 different shades whereas the water fresh tint only comes in a few shades so like for example i have shade light which is the lightest in here and i purchased br12 in the complexion touch so the lightest two shades in the complexion touch are b10 and br12 i usually wear bd01 which was not included so you know i have worn b10 and br12 both in different versions so we're going to try this out and i do have a sample of b10 to compare it with as well so let me know which one you think is better but I did want to show you some of these differences that you can see just through the packaging here. And then when we're talking about these products, the Water Fresh Tint actually comes with a little mini kabuki brush. Brush, and you can see here the size of that the complexion touch comes with a little mini brush as well notice that this one is a little bit more angled it's a little bit more of a pyramid shape although round and it's much smaller so you can see the difference here the reason for that is because this complexion touch is it's a multi-use product so while we're going over the details i'm going to start showing you the demos and in the first demo here can see that I am applying the Water Fresh Complexion Touch and I am using BR12 on my right side and B10 on the left. So we're going to start off applying this more as a spot concealer. So the Complexion Touch is actually a multi-use product. It is intended for use as a concealer and a foundation in one. So it is more meant to be used in strategic locations and then dispersed from there. So, you know, you wanna put it on your target areas and then spread it out. Now, application recommendations for this, and this is also from Chanel's recommendations, dispense it on your hand or a palette and you kinda of wanna spread it around and burst those pigments yourself. And then you can apply it either with a brush or with your fingers now the reason again that the small brush was provided is because this is intended for more targeted applications so that's one of the differences here between the complexion touch and the water fresh tint the water fresh tint is intended more for all over you don't have to use it all over of course but that was the original intention now both the complexion touch and the water fresh tint are both meant to be used either on their own or you can put them over or under foundation so they both work that way the water fresh tint a lot of people use this as a base or primer underneath foundation or another skin tint just to kind of balance the skin tone both products will help provide a bit more even complexion here and they are both going to be a lightweight gel texture with mostly water so the complexion touch actually has 60 percent water in it and you'll feel this cooling evaporative sensation as the water evaporates so it's considered three times more pigmented than the water fresh tint 
because they actually have three times the amount of pigment particles. So if you look at the droplets, you know, you can see that they were a lot larger as well. So the density of water droplets or pigment droplets to the water ratio is going to be much higher in the complexion touch. Now, as we're looking at the second demo here, in this case, we are looking at the complexion touch on one side and the water fresh tint on the other. So you can kind of get an idea. Now, one thing to note here is that, we'll look at this when we look at some arm swatches, but the complexion touch in BR12 is going to be, it's rosier, it's meant for cooler tones. The R, it's beige rosé, that's BR. So in that case, you know, it doesn't really mask the natural pinkness in my skin as well as the light shade in the water fresh tint so that is something to take into account the water fresh tint is more it's a bit more of a neutral color it's also lighter uh so uh, you know color wise yeah you know, I, I feel like the water fresh tint actually helps mask the natural redness in my skin a little bit better than the complexion touch purely because of the shade as you saw in the previous demo I think the B10 did a better job than the BR12. The B10 is it's a little bit more yellow in it, it's slightly warm, but um, I think perhaps it was probably a better choice than the BR12, but oh well. <laughs> so the Complexion Touch is considered to be a light to medium buildable coverage product, whereas the Water Fresh Tint is going to be sheer and they're both going to give you a natural luminous effect on the skin. The Complexion Touch is going to give you a healthy glow, whereas the tint gives you more of a bare skin effect, and that is according to Chanel directly. Now, both products are meant to provide or protect hydration in your skin and have a long wear on the skin. The Complexion Touch is supposed to last up to 12 hours, whereas the Water Fresh Tint is up to eight hours. As you can see in the demos, Although the Water Fresh Complexion Touch has three times more pigments, I personally don't really notice three times the amount of coverage. Perhaps if the shades were exactly the same, I would notice more coverage, but I still feel like it's not three times the amount regardless of the shade. So just something to note. Another thing about the Complexion Touch is it is intended for targeted touch-ups as well. And this, if you look at the how it applies under the eye as concealer, it actually does a fairly good job. If you're going for a really light, barely there look, it definitely adds a little bit more coverage under the eye than the Water Fresh Tint does. I feel like it looks just a little bit more, it could be like the luminosity because it is a little bit more luminous than the Water Fresh Tint, but I feel like it just looks slightly better under the eyes than the Water Fresh Tint does. So just some things to note there. Now, as we're looking at these demos, I'm also applying the Water Fresh Blush. This comes in six shades, and I picked up the shade Intense Coral. And again, just like the Complexion Touch and the Water Fresh Tint, you really wanna disperse this on your hand and then you know apply it from there. Chanel actually recommends using a finger application versus a brush. However, if you are interested in using a brush, they recommend their number 104 brush. So I found that the Complexion Touch brush actually does a pretty nice job because it's a nice small size. One of the issues with this blush is it is, you know, it's a water blush. So it's very liquidy, even though you might think that you hardly have any product on your hand, it does spread incredibly easy, easily on the skin. So you have to really be careful when you are targeting the application. So for a barely there pinched cheek look, I would recommend spreading it over the back of your hand, bursting those pigments, and then kind of wiping off your fingers first, dipping into it, and then tapping it on the back of your hand to knock off any excess before applying it to your face. I found that that gives you the most natural look on the skin. Now in demo three, I'm also playing with the blush, building it up so you can see the intensity of the color. It's definitely buildable. I could add another layer and make it even more pigmented than this, but I wanted to see how well the complexion touch and the water fresh tint cover that. 
So again, the Waterfresh tint is meant to be sheer. So if I put a sheer product on top of this, it should give me a really soft, natural look while still having powerful blush underneath. So it should soften that so it looks a little bit more natural. The Complexion Touch should cover that a little bit more than that because it does have more pigments and it's light to medium buildable coverage. So I put the blush on strongly and then we are on the right side. I use the Complexion Touch kind of around the cheek area, not covering all of the blush. I covered part of it, so you could kind of get an idea there. And then I used the Water Fresh Tint on top. And on the left side of my face, I used the Water Fresh Tint kind of all over, so you could see how they compare. And then I went back in over it towards the end of the demo, and I covered it with the Complexion Touch, um, and then just added some fresh blush on top for a lighter look. But that way you could kind of see how much it covers. So when I'm looking at the demos, all three of them together, it does to me seem like the Complexion Touch and the Water Fresh Tint are fairly similar in coverage. The Complexion Touch has a little bit more, but when I'm doing this demo with the blush, I definitely notice a difference. The Complexion Touch definitely seems to cover the blush better on its own than the Water Fresh Tint. So I do think, you know, perhaps the shades can be a little bit deceiving with that. Now, another really important fact to mention is that these shades in the Complexion Touch tend to run a bit deeper than the same shades in other foundation products from Chanel. Now, is that a problem? At first, I thought it was definitely gonna be a problem, but you can see how softly and sheerly these go on. So even though it's buildable and you can build up to, a deeper shade. The Beaver 12 is technically pretty dark for me. And you'll see in the arm swatches that, you know, it's a pretty dark product, but because of the high water content and the spreadability, even when you continue to layer it, it doesn't get that dark. So should you go with your regular color? Should you go with a lighter color? Honestly, I think it's not going to make a huge difference either way for most people. Um, you know, as we know, skin color is a spectrum so finding the right foundation shade is always a challenge and a lot of times there can be some overlap so i think for most people if you wear one color you can get away with that or the shade lighter obviously if you are a little bit closer you know kind of in between shades veer towards the lighter one so that would be my uh, opinion on that now both the the complexion touch foundation and the blushes have some ingredients that are just something I'd like to note. We've got the tamarind seed extract, which is for comfort and hydration. This is gonna help promote hydration in the skin as you're wearing it and allow it to stay comfortable for up to you know eight to 12 hours. The Complexion Touch also has jasmine stem extract, and that is to protect against environmental aggressors. So just a couple other notes about the blushes. So I only picked up one, honestly, I have to say, I wasn't sure if I was gonna like this product. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but just like the Water Fresh Tint at the Complexion Touch, it's gonna be water-based. And this one actually is 75% water. And you can see when I'm spreading the blush onto my hand, how long it kind of takes before you really see all of that pigment. But it definitely can become very pigmented. So this product is intended for a subtle flushed cheek effect on the skin and it's supposed to give you a natural looking healthy glow kind of like a just pinched cheek and we have a sheer weightless uh, finish and again they do recommend using finger application for these so i hope these demos were helpful they could kind of get you to see how the br12 and the b10 compare but let's take a look at some arm swatches as well so first i'm going to go ahead and put the water fresh blush in intense coral on my hand so you can see how liquidy it is you can see the pigment particles in there and then let's go ahead and start mixing this you can see even when you're mixing in you get quite a bit of color there are still like little looks like splotchy areas those are pigment particles that still haven't fully burst so one of the things i've noticed even when you keep spreading this on your hand it seems like there's almost always still like a little extra pigment that, you know, you kind of miss and you'll see on your cheek. So you really do want to, you know, 
tap it out. But this is the shade Intense Coral. You can see it's a little bit deeper here, a little bit lighter here. This is kind of your color range, essentially, for this particular shade. I think it's a really pretty coral. It leans more orange than coral, actually. So it's a little bit more peachy apricot than a true coral. I think a true coral would have a little bit more pink in it than this shade does. And just for reference, the packaging on the blush is like a mini version of the Water Fresh Tint. And this is gonna be 15 milliliters. It does not come with any brush or applicator. Again, the recommended uh, application is with your finger. And yeah, so it's made in France. So let's take a look at the Complexion Touch, also made in France. And this is gonna be 20 milliliters. You can see, again, we have a more slimline packaging. I actually really like this packaging. I like it better than this packaging. Um, personally, I just, I like the slim design. I feel it looks a little bit more chic than having this not quite frosted, but almost frosted plastic casing around it. So just, I'm gonna put this one kind of in the middle so we can compare around it. But you can see here, this is the shade and we can blend it out. So this is BR12. So, you know, it doesn't look too dark yet, um, but it's, we're gonna look at it after it dries. There's a little bit of oxidation with all, you know, products as they dry a little bit, but let's compare the B10 so here's my B10 sample. Obviously, I, I didn't get very much here. We're gonna put B10 right above it. And right off the bat, B10 looks a, more yellow. It looks warmer. And, you know, when I first started applying it, it actually looked a little bit deeper. But you can see already the BR12 is oxidizing. It's getting a little bit darker. So we'll see how that compares in a minute. All right, and then let's take a look at the Water Fresh Tint in light. One of the good things about the light shade though is that it is more neutral. It kind of blends you know, some of the warmer and cooler tones in there. So this is the light shade. We're gonna let these dry a little bit so you can really see how the shades compare. But in the meantime, we're gonna take a look at some other Chanel foundations in BR12. All right, so this is the Chanel Sublimage Foundation in BR12. And let's just put this one here. So that's the BR12 here. Now, as I mentioned, right now it's looking really light, but you can see right before your eyes, it's starting to oxidize. This shade here in the Sublimage, it's a little bit deeper than I would like. So when Chanel, Kind of added new shades in like BD01. I switched over to that. So we're gonna look at the Chanel Ultra Latent in BD01 right here. And you can see the difference here. Let me put a little bit of this right up at the top so you can compare the water fresh tint with that as well, because the light shade in the water fresh tint is a little bit closer. And this is the Chanel Le Beige Healthy Glow in BR12. I forgot I had another BR12 one. We'll put this this way so we can compare those together. You can see that this one is definitely a little bit peachier. It's a little bit deeper than either of them. However, it's another sheer foundation. So, you know, it since it is more sheer, more lightweight, the color isn't quite as noticeable as it is for me with the Sublimage, which is a little bit heavier coverage. And then that last one here, this is the Chanel, number one to Chanel in BD01. We'll put that one down here. Okay, and I'll be back in a minute. We're gonna just let these dry and come to their full oxidation level and then we'll take a look at these swatches. All right, so while we're letting these swatches dry, let's go over my thoughts a little bit on these. So this is the Water Fresh Blush in Intense Coral. I think this is a nice shade. I think if you're somebody who likes barely their makeup, this might be a nice product for you. However, me personally, I'm just not really sold on these because I find it a little bit too much work. 
if I wanted to have a lightweight uh, blush on, you know, something really light and soft and natural, I'd probably go more for a cream formula that I find a little bit easier to use because I don't have to break up the pigments. And, um, you know, I could dab that on or even like just a regular serum blush, something with a similar formula, but the pigments are already burst. I just find that to be, you know, one less step to deal with. And if I'm going with a no makeup makeup look, or barely their makeup at all <laughs> in the beginning, I am uh, probably really short on time. So for me, I feel like this is just a little bit gimmicky. And that's kind of what I was feeling before I picked it up, but I wanted to try it and see whether I was wrong. It's definitely beautiful on the skin, but it's just a little bit too much work in my opinion. So I don't plan on picking up more of these, but I think it is a nice product. And I can definitely see some people using this and loving this, you know, get up in the morning, put on just a little bit of the Water Fresh Tint or Complexion Touch, throw that on, call it a day. And, you know, that's great. But typically I'll wear more makeup than that. Or um, if I'm going for that kind of bare faced look, I just usually only have a couple of minutes and blending it out is too much time for me. Now, as for the Complexion Touch, I think this is a nice product. I like the little brush that it comes with. I like how it works under the eye for concealer. And if I were in the rush, in a rush during the summer or well, any time of the year, but honestly, I usually go with these more sheer makeup looks during the summertime. Um, so if I were rushing, I would use something like this or the Water Fresh Tint spread it between my hands, apply it all over and call it a day. Now I, that's what I do with the water fresh tint and I really like it for that. Um, however, I, you know, there are days when you want a little bit more coverage and this just isn't enough. So I think for me, I would probably pair these together. I think the BR12, you know, I would like it to be a little bit more neutral. I think the B10 probably would have been a better color for me to have overall on my skin. Um, I probably should have purchased that one instead. So if we're looking at the swatches now that they've dried, this is the BD01, the Water Fresh Tint in Light. This is the Complexion Touch in B10, BR12. You can see how much darker that got from when we first applied it. I mean, when we first put that on, it was almost the color of my skin. And you can see how much peachier and rosier it is now. So I think the B10 would have been a better choice. And then these are BR12s and we've got the Sublimage and the Healthy Glow. And you can see, you know, although some of the shades are a little bit darker, the BR12 is really not that much darker than a typical BR12. So I don't think, I don't really think you need to go if you're if you are a similar shade range as I am, I don't think you need to go with a lighter shade um, just because of the way this performs. And then these two are the BD01s. So that's kind of how the colors have played out now that they are dry. And one thing to note, you know, you can see that the Complexion Touch and the Water Fresh Tint, they're both gonna give you a pretty similar uh, type of finish on the skin. Your skin will feel moist um, you know, more like you have like a lightweight lotion or something on. If you are familiar with the Violet FR, the, the Boom Boom Milk, I was trying to think of what it's called. It's a spray moisturizer. That's, that has the same finish to the skin as this does. So you've got that luminosity. Um, you can feel moisture on your skin, but it doesn't feel like sticky or anything. So it's very comfortable to wear, but yeah, I think honestly, like complexion touch or water fresh tint, do you need both? If you're somebody who feels like you're not getting enough coverage from the water fresh tint, then yeah, go ahead and get the complexion touch. However, if you don't mind adding layers and layers and layers of the water fresh tint to get the look that you want, um, you know, with multiple layers of this, you can achieve a very similar look as the complexion touch. So it's just all about how much work you wanna put into it. But I think these are both nice products for certain types of looks. Now, wearing them under foundation and so forth, I do use the water fresh tint occasionally underneath 
a, a more lightweight foundation or if I'm doing like a spot concealer, I, I will put that on underneath. And I feel like I, I would do the same thing with the Complexion Touch. So I think both the Complexion Touch and the Water Fresh Tint are both fantastic products. They are incredibly similar, obviously, because they are the same idea, just one with more coverage than the other. And I think that should be your determining factor. So I don't think everybody needs to have both of these products, but I think the person who uses the Water Fresh Tint all the time, but just wants a little bit more coverage would really enjoy the Complexion Touch. So just a note here, the Water Fresh Tint is 30 milliliters versus 20 milliliters of this. So if you currently use the Water Fresh Tint in multiple layers, you know, it might be more efficient for you to just get the complexion touch. I personally think I will probably pair these together. Now I am happy that they have 16 shades in the complexion touch, but I do think that they should have included a BD01 shade. Uh, there should be something equivalent to the light. Obviously the B10 and the BR12 are much deeper than the light in the water fresh tint. And since you are getting more coverage with it, you do want to be a little bit more careful with a match. Now it doesn't really make a huge difference here, but I do think um, it would have been nice to have the lighter shades in there too. And last up, just a note about the brushes. And this is the one with the water fresh tint. This is the one with the complexion touch. This brush alone should tell you right away that this is meant more for spot or targeted areas. Um, but I do think that the two of these work well together. So although I like using this in certain areas, as I'm trying to blend it out on my face, I do wanna go in with a bigger brush for the edges and so forth. Plus this being a little bit more round it and everything here it doesn't blend the edges quite as nicely as something a little bit larger here does so um yeah you know i really feel like the complexion touch is a nice companion piece to the water fresh tint and the last thing i want to say is i feel like the chanel water fresh tint it was a really unique product that came out you know it was great at evening the skin tone so great underneath foundation you could put it on top of foundation it you know, it kind of had its own little, like, it, it, it just had its own little place in the makeup world. So I feel like the Complexion Touch coming out, it's a great idea, but I feel like if I really want to go with a light to medium buildable product, I'm probably going to go for a uh, lightweight foundation or something instead of this. So I think they work well together. They're very nice together, but I feel like if you're looking purely for a light to medium product for your entire face, I would probably go with something else personally. I'd love to know what you think and if you've tried these or you're interested in trying them. So please let me know and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and sign up for notifications so you know when my videos pop up. I will see you very soon and have a great day.